Hi and welcome to our second part about reactive forms of Angular. Now we are dealing with custom validators and we are doing two of them. So the first one we compare two passwords. So our password and our password confirm on our register component and check if they are the same. And the second one we will check if the password is containing a number. And the video structure is as always. We will have a look at the video outcome. We will write a user story or look at it. And then we will implement everything and at the end we will have a look what is coming in the next videos. Look what we are building, you see we have here that our password is not containing a number and passwords not matching. So if we type in a password here without a number, it's still there. If I type in a number, it's gone, so there's no error. And then I need a matching password. So if I just type this, it's not going away. But as soon as I type the same password as above, then the error is gone. So we are just making custom validators for checking if the password contains a number and if both passwords match to each other. Let's have a look at the story first. So here we have video 8 and now we are doing reactive forms with custom validators. So in the last video we already did the reactive forms for login and register and now we want in the register form use custom validators so that we compare the password and the password confirm property um, if they are the same. So we want to do this and we want to check that our password is containing at least one number and we want to do this with custom validators. So we move this to doing. So let's go into our code and the first thing we are doing is always we start a new feature. So git flow feature start. And now we are in video 8. And now we branch up from develop. And we can go into our um, Let's first start our API and then go into our front end. And now we can and we serve this and we can go to our register page. Now we have this fields and we want to add some um, yeah, validators for this. So you see we have here a password and a password confirm and in the last video already that what we want to do. We want to check that our password is at least containing one number. And so we need a new custom validators class. So we can say class custom validators. And we can make a static function um, and say password contains number. And here we can uh, pass in an access or in control, which is an abstract control, abstract control from Angular. And what we return is validation errors, validation, validation errors. And now we want to check if we are containing a number. So we can say const regex so we can do this with this and we can just escape it and say Oop, and must contain a number and check for this and then we can go for if regex dot test and go against this string and say control dot value and and control dot value is um, not null, then we just return null. So we say if our value from our property, from our password contains a number and the value is not null, then we return null. So we are not adding an error to it. But if there is, it's either null or we are not having a number, which is barely the same, then we can say we want to return and then we return an object. And here we say um, password invalid and we set this to true. And now we can go and check this regex and you see we have here a regex tester. You can just go to this. I will link it um, in the description. And we can just insert our regex here. So we can go for this. Um, I think yeah, this. One second. Hmm. 
Also Mac and Draw. Yeah, so. And now we, this D, uh, uh, this slash D matches a digit at equal to 0 to 9. And so I can insert here a string, and now you see it doesn't match our subject. So if I insert the number now, you see it's a full match. Or I can insert, I can remove it, and then it's invalid, and I can add it for here. So it's a full match. So we can use this. Here, and now we can just comment it in. And then you see, you could also do it like this and move this method or this function from here to this class. But um, what we want is we want to have like consistent code. So we can, so we ha have it here custom validators dot password contains a number and then it looks the same like here validators you know so it's a, the same schema and we want to do I want to add this to our HTML and so we have here our password and for example we could do something like this we could go for let's say h3 um, form contains following errors and here we could say only display so in the if our register form uh, is invalid so if there are errors and then we can just list it and we can say we go for a small um, password is not containing a number and then we can go here again for ng if and we can get our register form get we get our password property and then we check if there is an error that's called um, how did we call it we called it password invalid or let's rename this to um, yeah it's a password invalid so if this is true, then it should be displayed. So we go to our local host, 4200, go to our register page, and we see password is not containing a number. And if we type a number here, then this goes away. And now we have to check. Oh, I didn't, this was wrong. And so we contain errors and we could list there anymore. And when we do this, this is okay. And then the second thing that we want to do is we have two passwords, our password property and our confirmed password where we want to have obviously the same password as before. And so we need to check this. And so we can't add a validator for one property because we need both. So we go for another uh, function here and we say static password or passwords match. We want to have another abstract control so we can access all the values from our form. So this is again validation errors. And then we can go for our controls. So we can say const password is control.get and there we will get our password property dot value so we have this value and we say we have our password confirm and this is our control.get password confirm and we want to have our value here. And then we can just go for an if. And we say if password is or equals to password confirm. And so we can make this in brackets. So if this statement 
and this is, is not null, so password is not null. And and our password confirm is not null. So we can go probably for this. Then we return null, so we don't add an error to this object, or don't add a property. But if something of this is false, or if, if it's not, so if the password's not the same, or the password is null, or the password confirm is null, then we are not returning the error. So if this is not null, and this is also not null, and these are the same, then we return no error, so we return just null. But if either this are not the same, or this is null, or this is null, then we return our error, so we say we return an object, and we just add passwords not matching true. And now we don't add this here to one of our properties, but we add this to our validators for the complete form. And so we can just add this here. Then we go to our HTML and we can say here we go for we can go for errors. This should be the same. And then we can go here and say small ng if. And we say register form dot get. And we say um, so we don't need this get here, but we can say if register form prompt has error. So we are just going for a complete form now. And the error is um, passwords not matching. So this here. Then we can just say passwords not matching. And this is the same that we are going against here. And let's see. Password not matching. Now we can check. So if I think there's an error. Yeah, so it's a confirm password, not password confirm. And we change this. And then we check again. So this form looks good. And so if I type in a password here with a num without a number, then we get displayed our error. And we have our passwords not matching. So you see this is here. So we can just add a break here, make it be R so it's easier to see. So we have two errors here. So if I just type in this password and this, then this is still wrong because this is not containing a number. If I add a number, this goes away and I have to type it again and then everything works fine. So this was basically everything about custom validators. So with uh, the app set control, you're able to get all the values from your form. And if you are just validating uh, one property, you can just go in here. And if you want to validate the whole form or something in the whole form against each other, so you can go for the last options object here. So let's commit our changes. So we can just say git add minus upper a, git commit, and let's say video eight. And we say edit custom validators for registration form. We push it. One second. And then we can just say git flow feature finish to close this and merge it back into our develop branch. 
and you see now we are back on develop and have everything merged from our feature branch and we push it and then I will merge it later when the video will be online into our master branch. So let's close our Trello story. So we have here our story and what we did was we were comparing our passwords with the custom form validator and so this is done and we also checked if our password is containing at least one number. So we can move this to done and close it. So in the next video we are either doing one of these things here, either we implement our login with NGX, so with a front end store after the Redux pattern from Facebook, or we will do paginating all users in our front end with Angular material.